Many politicians run for office based upon a law and order platform, claiming to want to reduce crime rates and make the public safer. A lot of these politicians will push for longer sentences for violent crimes or more police on the streets so police can either be solving crimes or deterring crimes from taking place. But few of them try to tackle the major factor underlying most crime, which is education. All around the world, the one factor which differentiates criminals from the rest of the population is that, on average, criminals have a far lower standard of educational achievement than the general members of society. This means if you want to reduce crime as a politician, you have to commit more money into education. It doesn't mean putting more money just into schools and colleges for young people, although that helps. It also means funding adult education especially targeting those people who may have dropped out of an education at an early age for some reason, but now realise they made a mistake and want a second chance at learning. So adult education classes and libraries need to be supported better than they currently are if you want to have a significant impact on crime. Whilst may represent an increase in government spending, that spending is easily offset by an increase in income tax receipts from those people as they start to get higher paid jobs in the future let alone the impact lower crime rates have on the economy as a whole. While this kind of preventive spending on education is a long-term commitment, the impact would be substantial in most countries, it can take many years for that impact of that spending to be seen in national statistics, and some politicians want to be doing something which has a much more immediate impact on crime numbers. But directed educational spending can also have a more immediate impact there as well. However, since this spending actually relates to fixing something that's broken, the costs per individual are greater than starting off with a better base level of education for everyone. Here I'm talking about specifically prisoner education, starting with basic language skills for prisoners and working all the way up to further and higher education programs. Many prisoners are unable to read and write even to the most basic level. It means that on release from prison, after they've served their sentence, they may find it almost impossible to get any kind of job, and that in turn leads them back into crime again, as crime is the one way they know they can make money, even if it comes with the risk of going back to jail again. Many are virtually stuck in the crime, arrest, conviction, jail, release cycle, and may continue until they die. By giving people an education, you can break that cycle, give them an opportunity to see that they might be able to do something useful with their lives. The minor problem here that due to these people being in prison, the costs of providing education to them tend to be higher than educating them before they get into prison in the first place, not in terms of staffing, but also in providing quiet places conducive to study in the prison environment. The advantage of politicians is that the impact here is far more immediate as re-offending rates drop off dramatically when these educated prisoners are released back into society. So politicians are going to have to make a choice over where they want to spend the money. They're going to have a genuine impact on crime levels rather than just sounding tough on crime when they do media interviews or when they're on social media platforms. This also means that you as a voter also have to ask politicians, what are you doing about prisoner education? Do you really want to reduce crime or are you just sound off and giving the appearance of being tough on crime? Those countries which invest the most in the education of the people have the lowest crime rates in the world and also the highest levels of GDP per head of population. So basically everybody wins. Other advantage of educating prisoners means that the levels of boredom and when prisoners is reduced, they now have something meaningful to do with their day, which in turn leads fewer assaults on members of staff or even assaults on fellow prisoners, along with fewer prison riots and similar disruptions taking place in the prisons.